we are going to be installing some power stop brakes so these are power stop ceramic brake pads these are the evolution plus brake pads and then these are their geomet brake caliber uh, brake rotors so i know a lot of people are really big fans of the drill and the, the the slotted rotors from power stop i actually really like the geomet ones those are the coated ones it eliminates the amount of rust that builds up over time on the rotor and they look great and they also perform great i had these on my last truck they're perfect we're going to go with it and they're a little bit cheaper than the um the drilled and slotted ones personally i ran those drilled and slotted ones on my f-150 back in the day and they're actually pretty noisy so i really like the flat rotors like i said these brakes are huge on these trucks so you don't need any more help because they already are performing really well given the size of the truck and the size of the brakes because they're massive so i will show you every step along the way but let's go ahead and get that tire off the truck all right, safety first in the Waterfall R41 garage. Make sure that the hydraulic jack is not the only jack holding your truck up once it's up in the air. We got jack stands back there. I always use two per side just to be on the safe side. I love redundancy. I'm an engineer. I love that N plus one. Anyway, we got the wheel off, so let's take a look at everything. First thing we're going to do, remove the 5 16 on the caliper itself. That's what holds the caliper to the caliper bracket. 5 16 up here, 5 16 down below. That guy should come right off. We're going to take a wire, tie him up to the upper control arm, keep him up out of the way. We'll get back to him later. Then we're gonna take a 21 millimeter socket and remove the bolts that are holding the caliper bracket to the actual hub assembly. Once we get that off, then we can pull the clips off, pull the brake pads out, and then we can turn our attention to this guy. Then when we get to the rotor itself, we have a T30 bit right here, or T30 screw right here. We're gonna go ahead and use this guy and hopefully get that off without any sort of issues. Um, the other one on the other side did fight me a little bit, but I think we can get it off. Uh, we're going to use some penetrating lube, get everything wetted down, and hopefully that will help us get everything out of the way. So, All right, we got our caliber tied up out of the way. I just used a piece of wire to hang it from the upper control arm. You're going to want some room here because if this rotor fights you, you're going to need to get a big old hammer out to start hitting on it. And you obviously don't want that caliber in the way because the only area you can hit on it is right about here. So now that we have our caliber brackets, uh, I guess, available, now we could pull, we could either, we could do one of two things. We could pull out our brake pads now um, and get them up out of the way or we could just go ahead and remove the brake caliber bracket all as assembly and then everything should pop right off let's go ahead and do that it's a 21 millimeter bolt on the back this whole thing should just swing up and up on and out of the way then we can go ahead and fight with everything down here you could see i already went ahead and sprayed everything with penetrating lube b um go over the top with it you're gonna need it these are hub centric hubs here and that brake cal or that brake rotor is on there pretty tight as is this bolt right here. And I only have 50,000 miles in a truck and this guy is gonna fight up, fight us, I'm guaranteeing it. Um, so have a backup plan, but also spray everything with penetrating lube. It really does make everything a lot easier. Um, doesn't make it perfect, but it does make it easier in the long run. All right, we're in the middle of taking this guy off, but just a quick little tool tip. Do yourself a huge favor. If you plan on doing a lot of work on your Ram truck, get yourself a 21 millimeter ratcheting wrench. I swear to God, this size is used on almost everything. When I was doing the control arms, doing the suspension, doing any sort of lift kit or whatnot, 21 millimeter seems to be the go-to size for a lot of the nuts and bolts on these trucks. So spend the money. I think this is about 25 bucks from Menards, so it's Master Force. It's not the best one you can get snap on and all that stuff, but this one does the job. Uh, so once you break everything loose with the breaker bar on those 21 millimeters, then it's a lot easier to go ahead and use a ratcheting wrench. So again, if you have one tool that you buy to support a truck project, Ratcheting wrench in a 21 millimeter size is gonna be the one to go to. All right, so we have our caliper bracket off. Like I said, you have one of two ways to do it. You could go ahead and take your brake pads off before you do that, or you could just take it all off as an assembly. I find it easier. Then you just pinch these guys, and then they will pop right out, and then you don't need these brake pads anymore. And then you can pull this out, as well as these little clips, and we'll clean everything up. But we'll walk through that in a minute. Let's focus our attention on this bad boy. T30 Torx bit, big old hammer to knock the rotor completely off. It's gonna be on there pretty tight. Like I said, we sprayed everything down with penetrating lube um, and be very, very careful with this guy. Drawback, or I'm sorry, the plan B on this guy is if we can't get it out with the Torx bit, since it's already kind of chewed up from the other side, we can go ahead and drill this one out. It's gonna suck, but it's doable, but we're gonna to try to get it out with the right tool. All right, like I anticipated, this guy definitely fought us and I ended up stripping out that Torx bit because it is seized up in there. I absolutely hate these bolts that they use to hold rotors on. 
Um, I kind of get the point of them, but I also hate them at the same time. So what I'm gonna do here is just slowly work my way up with a drill bit and drill it out. Uh, you just start with the one that fits inside there and just slowly get bigger and bigger until you basically flatten this out. Then what you could do is once that's thin enough, start hitting it with a hammer and it'll pop it off. I've done this before on my Honda uh, back in the day. There's other bits you can get that are made for removing bits like this. They were basically reverse uh, strip screw bits. I don't have any at the at right now and I don't have a ride to the hardware store to get them. So we're gonna go ahead the old school method and just drill this thing out and then take an angle grinder and just smooth it out and then we'll get back to installing our brake. All right, we had to get some light on the situation, but basically what I did is I slowly drilled out that screw uh, with bigger and bigger drill bits. You can see I got a whole drill bit kit there. And let's see, this is what is left. So basically it drills it out and then the piece gets so thin that once you start hammering on the rotor, it'll break the screw off. So everything's freed up now and I had to beat the hell out of the rotor itself just to get that broken free. But we're gonna pull that off now and what we should see left is just the shank part of that screw and I can go ahead and grind that off. And then we can reverse everything and go ahead and install the new stuff. But man, that guy put up a fight and that's only at 40, 50,000 miles. So you can only imagine if you're trying to milk these things for 75, 80,000 miles, how bad those would be. And this is Midwest driving, so rust is gonna happen. But I've never seen something seize up that bad um on brakes that early in their life the gmc never had that issue um i absolutely hate those screws that are on the rotors so i'm not going to reinstall it obviously i can't it's falling apart but let's go ahead and get this guy off let's clean up the rest of that shank clean up everything and then start reinstalling all the brake components all right so we are cleaned up there you can see what's left of that screw it's in there but it's nice and flat i'm gonna go ahead and clean everything off a of brake cleaner right before we install everything but let's turn our attention to the caliber bracket so i went ahead and pulled off those clips those clips are what helps the, the brake pads themselves slide in and out, and then they're spring-loaded, so they push the, bre the pad up against the rotor. So here are the clips. Unlike some cars, uh, there's four pieces to each caliper bracket. Some cars, there's just two, one per side, and there's like a little bar that goes across. Um, so these clip in pretty easily. Make sure when you're clipping these in, this little rounded part is on the outboard side of the caliper bracket. So the, or I guess, it's pointing towards the outside of the caliber bracket, not towards the rotor. So you're gonna have one on this side and then you'll have one on the other side. So they are uh, there are certain ones that go on certain ways. But just make sure that this rounded part is, because this is the spring that pushes on the pad, make sure that's on the outside of the rotor side. So it's on inboard and the most extreme outboard side. So pads are right there. They are, it doesn't matter what side they go on. Um, some trucks like my GMC, it, it was really specific which one went on the inside, which one went on the outside. These don't matter. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is take some brake cleaner, clean up these channels here, get these guys installed. And then what I like to do is take brake caliber grease and paint the insides so that when the pads are sliding, they slide nice and smoothly. Then the other thing we're gonna do is pull these pins out. Let's see if I can get that out. We're gonna pull these guys out, wipe off that old grease, and then re-grease them so everything slides nice and smoothly. What kind of sparked this whole project wasn't the fact that my brakes were fading. Um, I probably had a few more, couple, 10, 20,000 miles left on them, but I was getting a chirp, uh, and that chirp is pretty evident that one of the caliber pins is dry, and I need to just re-grease everything. And I figured if I'm gonna dive into everything, I might as well um, go ahead and just do the brakes while I'm in here. So let's go ahead, get the pins greased up, get those clips or get this cleaned up, get the clips installed, get them painted, and then I'll show you how to load the uh, pads, get the new rotor on, and then we'll reverse all the instructions. All right, so the brake caliper bracket is prepared. You can see real quick right in there, I put a little bit of glob of grease on each of the little channels that the brake pad itself slides on. So we'll hold this off on the side for now. The pins are re-greased, everything's moving nice and smoothly. Turn our attention back to here. Let's go ahead and clean up the hub assembly since we're drilling and there's a lot of shavings all over the place and then we're good to go to pull the rotor out and slap that bad boy right onto the hub and then reverse everything and get the caliber right. All right, I think part of the reason why I like to install these coated rotors so much is because they look so good when they come out of the box. Nice matte finish, nice consistent. And I will say, uh, from my experience on my GMC, they stay looking like this for a long time. At some point, the hub does get a little funky, but the brake does stay kind of good looking uh, and it keeps that rust off it. So I don't have to deal with all this rusted mess that I had on the factory brakes. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and pull that sticker off. That sticker is there just to tell us that it's Geomet coating. Uh, I'll wipe everything down, just make sure the grease is off. We could take the rotor, pop it on the hub, and then we'll turn our attention to the caliper because what we need to do now is use one of the old pads and we need to compress the pistons. So inside here, 
there are two pistons and we need to use a big old C-clamp and squeeze those guys down so that we have enough room to put that right back on uh, with new pads and the new rotor because the new pads are going to be thicker than the worn down ones. Okay, so, got the rotor on. Everything's good for now. It's not going to sit flat because these are really hub centric hubs. So once you tighten the wheel, it's going to pull the brake rotor flat. So don't be concerned if when you're spinning it, you see it bending out and you can hear it hitting the dust shield every so often. So now we're turning our attention to that. We're going to take an old brake pad and what we're going to do is lay this guy inside there and then we're going to use a C clamp like this, hook it on the back and we're just going to push that brake pad down which is going to compress both of these pistons. So we're going to try to keep that right in the middle uh, but ultimately what we're trying to do is push these down all the way so that when we go to put the caliper back on the rotor with the new pads there, it'll fit. It's not going to fit right now because it's used to our factory pads which were worn down a little bit not much i mean these things look like they still have plenty of life maybe i'll hold on to them but we still do need to compress these because the millimeter wear that those have on it is still gonna prohibit us from being able to install this as is so let's use that c-clamp old brake pad push everything down then we'll go ahead and get our caliber bracket loaded with our pads it's easier to do that before it's on the vehicle and then we can get the caliber installed in the rotors uh, also. All right, you can see when you look at our pistons, they're much more compressed now. So I just basically put the pad on both pistons and you can really only get access to one. So you got to do one at a time. When you do one side, the other side tends to shoot out a little bit. So you got to keep going back and forth, but eventually you get them down completely and we're good to go on that. So now what we're going to do is get back to our caliber bracket here and we're going to go ahead and preload our brake pads onto this before it's on the truck. I say this from experience. It's really hard to get the brake pads on because of these little spring clips here. It's hard to get them on when the when the caliber bracket is on the vehicle. So if you do it now, then you could carefully slide it over the brake rotor and get everything situated with the bolts. But all right, so we have the caliper bracket ready to go. The pads are loaded in there. Um, easiest way is to put the pads in the middle of the caliper bracket and then slide them into the brackets. Make sure they're not binding up on the spring clips here. So now what we could do is go ahead and take this and install it on the rotor itself using those 21 millimeter bolts to fasten everything down. So we are good to go, so let's start doing that. All right, so the caliper bracket is on, the brake pads are situated, everything's pinched in. Now all I need to do is go ahead and undo that wire, slowly slide the brake caliper on here, being mindful of where all the brake uh, um, tubing is at and everything. So we're not cinching everything, bending anything, or pinching anything. Once I should do that, then I'll be able to get those 5 16th bolts and slide them back on here they're just gonna go right through the caliber into these little sliding pins and that's ultimately how the brakes work. Then we could put our wheel on, torque everything down, and then we'll talk through the brake-in sequence on brake pads because that's something I think a lot of people forget is once you install these things, you do need to break them in or bed them in uh, and there's a sequence to it, but we'll talk about that. In a minute. All right, so everything's tightened up. Last thing I wanna make sure I call out is do one last inspection. When you're doing brakes, you don't really wanna mess up anything. So look over everything, double check that the caliper to caliper bracket and then the bracket to hub bolts are tight. Nothing's wobbling, um, that everything's looking good. Your wire that you're using to hold the caliper up out of the way isn't still hanging there. I've done that once, it sucks. You hear it all of a sudden and it freaks out. But anyway, once you double check everything, now it's time we're gonna go throw our wheel back on and then we could talk through the break-in sequence. Let me go look it up, figure out exactly what PowerStop recommends because every brake pad company has their own recommended procedure. They're all about the same, basically starting fast, slow down, and you wanna get these brake caliper and pads heated up. You wanna get the pads heated up. But anyway, I will walk through that procedure in just a minute here, but let me get the wheel thrown back on here, get the truck down, torque all the wheels down, and then we can talk through the brake. All right, ran out of light and frankly energy to film the last closeout of the video, but let's talk through the break-in procedure real quick. So like I said, go on the website for the brake pads uh, or for the brand of brake pads that you bought. Every company is gonna have their own specific break-in procedure. They're all about the same, but basically the way the PowerStop recommends breaking in those Evolution brake pads is what they want you to do is drive, you know, find a straight road with not a lot of traffic on it, and you're gonna do some pretty aggressive stops uh, from 40 miles an hour down to 10 miles an hour. Do that five times in a row. Make sure you're coasting after that 10 uh, mile an hour stop. You're not gonna wanna completely slam on the brakes. So 40 miles an hour to 10, then accelerate again, 40 miles an hour to 10, do that five times. Then the next thing you're gonna do is 
and again, you're gonna to to do this five times, but 35 mile an hour to five mile an hour stops. And these aren't as aggressive. These are just kind of your regular, more moderate braking. So you're gonna go 40 to 10 five times, then you're gonna go 35 to five, five times. And then afterwards, you wanna drive for a minimum of five minutes without stopping. So if you are coming up to a red light, what I like to do is just put the truck in neutral and just kind of coast. Um, you know, obviously you're gonna drive a little bit slower, but all that allows the brake pads to break in. They're gonna get hot and you wanna basically activate that, that compound in the, the pads themselves. What you don't wanna do is slam on the brakes and then sit there with your foot holding down the brake pads, letting that brake pad sit on the rotor. You're gonna create a hot spot and it's gonna mess up the braking procedure on your brake pad or on your brake pads. So 40 to 10 five times aggressively, 35 to five, five times moderately, then your brake pad should be pretty well and set in and broken in and then just drive around for a little bit, let it cool off um, before you park the truck for the day. So I'm gonna go ahead and break everything in, but hopefully this helped guide you kind of on your, uh, your RAM brake upgrade. Like I said, I used the Geomet coated rotors from PowerStop. I use their Evolution ceramic brake pads. I've used these in the past, had a lot of really good success. I know a lot of folks like those drilled and slotted rotors. This just not me. You know, you obviously, I think a lot of that's for looks, um, but these brakes are huge on this truck. I'd rather just keep the rust off it with those Geomet ones, and I figure I'd spend the money on that versus the drilled and slotted. A little bit noisier in my opinion. But with that said, thank you very much for watching. Have a great weekend. Bye.